humidified? Yeah. Liquid? So, humidified air with medication. Oh, welcome. Take a seat. Okay, so we literally just started, so you're good. We're talking about nebulizers. So the humidified air with medication. So it can be with or without medication. Um, basically, it looks like this box thing plugs into the wall, and then it has like oxygen tubing, basically. And then, have you ever seen like girls like you know the blow dryer with like the little funnel you can put on the end? It makes it like more concentrated. It's like that, but mini for your mouth. <laughs> it's the best description I have. You know what I mean though, right? Yeah, yeah it's exactly, exactly what it looks like. So it's like this. Then it has this little chamber right here where you can put medication. So the air will come up and then like humidify and get the medication. Or you can just put water here. And then the air you breathe has medication in it or it's just humidified. Yeah, so respiratory therapy usually does it a lot of the times. Um, if they have oxygen in, like a face mask of oxygen, they can, you can just like sneak it underneath and they can breathe that too. Um, sometimes kids just have an actual face mask of it, it's easy for them, or you can even just like wave in front of their face and they breathe it in. So you don't really have to know much about it, just kind of what it is and like that you can put like albuterol or something in it. Um, yeah. Okay. Didn't they say something in lab about it being small versus large particles? Today? I don't know. No, not today. Yeah, we don't have it Yeah. Oh, well you guys know how. <laughs> yeah, sorry. How was that? It was good. The they're getting boring, aren't they? Huh? They're getting boring. Well, they just take forever. But. I don't know. I just remember they'd always come and be like, sit behind me, they'd be like, wake up. <laughs> they'd like tell me to stand up. So I'd be the kid in the back like, <laughs> I just want to sit. <laughs> okay. Is this still 29? Yes. So meter dose inhaler. These are like what people use for asthma and stuff. Does anyone have asthma? Anyone have an inhaler? I've used one. Yeah. So basically what you we want to know for these things is so that you can teach a patient because like first thing you want to do when a patient comes in and says my inhaler's not working or I need more medication is to say how do you use it. Show me how you use it just so you can see if they're using it correctly. Because um, this is a kind of like a hard one if they don't get taught it correctly, especially with children. So how are we going to teach a patient how to use these? So I know you need to shake it first. Shake it first, yep. What's next? Um, do you, is it just with the new ones or the old ones that you let it out that you do a puff push out in the air? Is that just a new one? Priming it? Yeah. Just a new one. Just a new one? Okay. Yeah, so priming it, teach them if it's brand new, prime it with one puff. Um, for the actual action of it, you shake it first and then you want to coordinate um, pressing down, like it depends because there's like the disc inhalers, there's also like little mini ones. So we're just going to say press down and inhale. So inspiration, you want to coordinate those at the same time so that you get, because the medication, the purpose is to get to your throat, right? Not to your mouth or tongue. So you want to make sure those actions are coordinated and in sync so it works most effectively. Um, children, that's really hard to do, so you're going to give them a spacer. And what this is, it's just like this little extension between the end of the inhaler and their mouth, so you can press the button, have the medication in the spacer, and they can breathe that in. So it doesn't have to be exact same motions. Um, you want to make sure that, because sometimes you just do two puffs, have one minute in between each puff. It's a nice noise. Okay. And this just helps the medication better absorb in your throat. And then um, after, so once you inhale it, you kind of want to hold your breath for, if you can, like 10 seconds so that it can really absorb. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then also with these, teach them after you kind of absorbed it all, rinse your mouth out after. Just because um, you don't want, like the medication is not for your tongue, it's not for your cheeks. So you even know what happens if you don't do this? Lots of times, like what could you yeast develop? Infection. Yeast infection, thrush, right? Yeah. So that's gonna look like white patches on the tongue. So if the patient has that, you want to get an antifungal just to kind of eliminate that. So rinse the mouth out, shake, all those things. So it's super important to teach the patient to do it correctly. Because even if they kind of do it right, they're not gonna get all the medication. And it's not gonna work as well. <laughs>